Hi, everybody. Welcome to today's session of Spike Essential from ATLAB. Thank you for waiting and patiently. Let's start the session now. I'm sure looking into these different characters out here, you are able to relate to few of them depending upon the character that they look like or the activity that they are doing. And up there are the trainers that are we from ATLAB. ATLAB have got a range of trainers out here, which are all our LEGO certified trainers. So we have Ahilan, Jasper, me, Rai Kadam, and Karpaga, and even Rashid out here. And we are all here uh, to host this session today and give you all the details that you needed for LEGO Education Spike Essential. Please use the chat box. You can type in any of your questions that you have in and Ahilan is there and to uh, reply to any of your questions that may come in across, yeah? Perfect, the agenda for today's webinar is we begin with LEGO Education Approach to Learning. We will look into the introduction of Spike Essential and we will walk through some of the Spike Essential components. Then why is it necessary to shift from LEGO Redo 2.0? Uh, go through some tutorial activities, which is very important to know and to begin with uh, small lesson overviews with Animal Alarm and the Mini Mini Golf and the professional development that is available with LEGO Education. We are excited to showcase to you the ATLAB Venus Challenge, a completely customized activities by ATLAB. And then I'll wrap up around. Okay, so let's get started by taking a brief look at the LEGO education approach to learning. This is the basis for everything LEGO education does. What hands-on learning means? The effectiveness of hands-on learning has been well documented for many years. Research has shown us that using our hands can activate between 60 to 80% of our brain capacity, which is a very fantastic starting point for learning. I'm sure even you will realize there are many things that our hands do in without really knowing the instructions on how to do it. Examples can be like tying a shoelace, yeah, or maybe writing or driving. Uh, girls tie up their uh, hay ponies. So these are something which I hand know it and you don't really instruct to do it. And that's what hands-on learning is all about. And during this webinar, you'll get a better brief on what hands-on learning can do for our students. Now is the time to know in a little more fun facts about Lego Education and Lego Group before we move on into more details of Spike Essential. So there is a small poll that will come up related to the fun facts and it would be great if you all can take part uh, into this polling session. We launch a poll now. Okay, so the first one is Lego is formed from the Danish world, which, word which is called as Leg God which means, does it mean hands-on learning? Does it mean play well? Or does it mean playing is fun? We know what Lego is, right? But do we really know from where the word Lego came in? So it came in actually from the Danish word, you mean Lego, leg got, and you can think in across, what does leg got mean in Danish word? The second one is there are more many figures than kids below 10 on earth, humans on earth or ducks on earth. And the last one is you can combine six different two by four Lego bricks in how many different ways? Is it around 10,000? Is it around 10 million and 31,344? Or 915,000, uh, 3,765? 
perfect. We are getting different answers out there. Okay, let's end the poll and see end the results. Can you just give in? Uh, 38 participants have participated. Come on, we want every, all of you to give in your thoughts on the fun facts of Lego. Nothing is right or wrong here. This is to know more about the Lego education. Okay, so let's see in the actual result. Okay, so the Lego is formed from the Danish word leg god, which means play well. Absolutely right. There are more minifigures than humans on earth. Can you believe it? You can combine six to into four Lego, Lego bricks in how many different ways? 915,103,765 is also absolutely right. It's, and so it's amazing to see in each one of you know uh, the different fun facts. And there is a lot more fun facts about Lego, which you can go into the Lego history and uh, find out more details about them. It's just amazing to see in uh, the different facts which are available with Lego education. Thank you so much. Now, moving ahead, let's look into the history, right? So the Lego group Learning Through Play, it started since 1932 by the Danish carpenter named Mr. Old Kirk. Uh, and then he always believed in supporting children in learning through play. And then in around 1958 was the time when they came up with the six bricks. And their idea has been to create a toy that prepares the child for the life. And then is the Lego bricks has always been used for learning. And then during in 1980, they came up with a dedicated educational department. And this department came up with the different curriculums and the lessons that came up with the Lego education. So right now, in front of you, with the video that's shown in, uh, you will be able to see different bricks or the different stages of the Lego which was found. Yeah, so uh, you have the Lego Duplo brick, you have the minifigure, you have the wheel, you know, the new wheels which are therein. You have the hub, the new hub, and then you have the We Do hub. So, can you? Uh, try to place it in the order from when Lego education began and which is the new form of it. Yeah. So maybe I can just mention out and you can tell me it, at the rate of one, two, three, four, five, uh, which one is first. So where do you think so the minifigure should go? It should go at number one place, two, three, four or five. Can you put it into the chat box quickly? At which stage was the minifigure found? The first one, second place, third, fourth, fifth. You can put it in the chat box for me, quickly. Two, perfect. So we have minifigure at the place two. Just a moment and keep it in the front of two. Yes, perfect. Okay, now mm, let's see in the Lego We Do Hub. Now, can you just mention Lego We Do Hub has come in which position? One, two, not two now, so one, three, four, or five. Three. Okay, okay. The most number I've written it as three. So let's keep it at number three. Now let's see in where is the Duplo break. So Duplo break, six breaks, the Duplo break should go in at one, two, three, four, and five. 
we are done with the poll questions actually right now we are looking into the video the video that you can see in is where we have kept all the breaks so uh now you have left with the first one which we were talking about the lego six bricks so the lego duplo brick comes at the first place okay so that was the first thing first thing that was invented then came the minifigure then came the then came the vidu uh, kit and so after the vidu hub we have left with spike essential hub and then is a spike prime wheel so the spike prime wheel which place does it go and then fourth or the fifth wow amazing i'm just loving the way where you all have previously good knowledge about lego education and uh, the different structures of it i'm sorry there are a few people are not able to see uh just a second just give me a second please okay i will do one thing is i will stop the share so that each one of you can see the video can you see the video now please i hope all of you can perfect okay they are typing numbers to put them in the order yeah so first came the lego duplo bricks then came in the mini figures then came in the lego we do hub and as mentioned by you all came the spike prime wheel and then was the spike essential hub which was invented so that was the flow and it's amazing to see and who all are here and most of you know what's been the flow and what's been the progress of the spike thank you so much for that and let's get back to our flow just give me a second i'm sharing my screen again So, so as mentioned and as discussed and so it all started with a duck toy and as it moved on during the 1980s the lego education was formed in and curriculum wise was the expertise that was that had come in across and lego has been used uh, in classes to enhance steam learning so it uses a complete holistic approach to learning uh, to enhance students cognitive skills emotional skills social creative as well as physical skills lego spike essential is a part of the lego learning system so it offers a range of recognizable components across products these include curriculum programming bricks uh, hardware and professional development So what is Lego Spike Essential it is based on the complete Lego education approach to learning it's designed for the primary school students grades 1 to 5 and Spike Essential contributes to literacy math and social emotional development while engaging students in hands-on investigation of steam concepts it uses everyday themes mini figures and familiar lego building elements to turn steam learning into fun hands on experience for students of all abilities so what you need in you will need to get started with spike essential you will need the spike essential kit and you will need the app the spike app which is the same now for the spike prime as well as the spike essential and uh, you need to download it to connect it and to access the different units which are there for the spike essential so these are the main five components of the spike essential you have the bricks you have the intelligent hardware you have the complete curriculum programming and professional development so when it comes to the bricks it includes familiar stackable lego bricks in a color sorted storage box which is there as you can see in so the complete for the young ones when it is specifically is very important for it to be color sorted and it is easily divided into two different components so you can 
open it and it's not a big tree where the young ones are struggling to handle out the tree yeah and then you have even this replacement pack which you can see in because these are the small parts which gets on missing and then these replacement packs are a big help for us as educators the base plates which are available they are for easy building for the young hands in to build in different models and yes, there are different intelligent hardware out here, like the small hub, which is there. Uh, there are angular motors. There is a three by three light matrix, and there is a color sensor, which is available with it. And meet Daniel, Maria, Leo, and Sophie. These are the minifigures, which are core component of the Spike Essential lessons. Each of them has different characteristics that students will get to know throughout the lesson. They have been specially developed to be easy for students to relate to and identify with. Yeah, so each and every lesson starts with a storyline which is related to the character and your students are going to solve the problem for them. So the Spike Essential Curriculum Units are designed around playful narrative-based problem solving with relatable themes designed to develop young students into independent STEAM thinkers. This narrative-based problem solving incorporates social-emotional language throughout the entire learning experience. It includes five different curriculum units that focus on national standards for both lower and upper primary. Each unit, it is, has around seven to eight 45 minutes lessons. There is plus language, arts and maths extension for each lesson. So there's a complete 50 hours of classroom content in total. And if you see in The Great Adventure, it's related to the interactive stories, which is related to computational thinking. The Amazing Amusement Park is uh, all about engineering, a fun day out. Uh, where the students are introduced to the engineering design skills. Happy Travel, this unit will develop your students' understanding of the computer science. Then there is Crazy Carnival Games. It will develop your students' understanding of energy, energy transfer and collision. And then there is Quirky Creations, which is engineering cool school hacks. And but last not least, uh, there is even first Lego League this time, which is new where you can use it uh, to take part into the first Lego League competition. And yes, this time you have in two programming blocks to code with the Spike Essential. You have the icon blocks as well as the word blocks. And every lesson offers guided instructions to support students as they begin coding and building. They begin by following the building instructions to build their models and then use the guided coding instructions to create their first program. As they move on, there are open-ended challenges that they solve in. Now let's look into the top 10 reasons to shift from Lego Vidu to Spike Essential. The Spike Essential Hub, if you have seen the hub, it has got an, the gyro sensor which is inbuilt, uh, unlike the Lego Vidu Hub, since you all are aware about the Lego Vidu, you can get a clear comparison uh, where Spike Essential Hub uh, is far uh, more technically better than the Lego Vidu Hub, which can be connected uh, using the USB, which is available in the Spike Essential Kit, as well as with the Bluetooth, which was not available with Vidu 2.0. The color sorted trees, as showed you across the color sorted trees, which are there, and uh, it becomes easier for sorting the different items which are available. The spike motors, these are completely improved and it is square in shape, which is easy to build in across for the different models. And instead of the motion sensor, you have the color sensor for you in the spike essential, which is the same hardware of as you get in a spike prime. And it identifies eight different colors in and also if there's no color. And then you have a new LED light matrix. 
if you remember in we do it was just on the top that that light you need to do an on and off but here you haven't to decorate it to make it uh, more colorful and you have the led matrix where each and every uh, part of the led you can change it to different color and make it very colorful your different models which you have in and then there are different decorations like you have in many figures props animals magnifying glasses out there unless unlike uh, we do 2.0 where you didn't have an any mini figures and you had an only those kind of different eyes that you can put in across to your different models and so it's a great combination and when you look into the curriculum there are different units and all are related to themes and in every theme you have different lessons which are available That's the case huh? in lego v2 in lego v2 you had all the lessons and uh, there was no actual flow on the themes uh, like you could jump from a life science to a earth science lessons but here uh, in spike essential they have come up with different themes and under themes there are around 7 to 8 lessons which cater to that particular theme and the spike software again in lego we do we had only the icon based but here you have the icon based as well as the scratch based programming saving files projects and transfer uh i mean i didn't know how we really got through this but lego we do never had the option of saving the different projects that we did in right uh but we did manage to use it across but uh, nonetheless now uh you can save all the programs that you're doing in and share it with everybody and transfer your files from one laptop to other or one device to other and the last is related to different mo models if you have seen the lego we do curriculum uh, there were more of open ended uh, challenges that were there in and but here for each and every units that are available you have the building instructions and each model is different to it so uh, all the lessons that are available you have these many different models that your students can build in and use it in their classes and i think these are the top 10 reasons why we need to shift from lego we do 2.0 to lego spike essential so which part do you think so that you would you like the best in that shift from lego we do can you put it in the chat box what is that one thing that really trigger that yes you need to have that shift when you gone through this 10 different changes can you put it in the chat box please color sensor yep agree with you see the project is good totally agree i mean we have really lived without it right when we need them to save our projects compact motor and light matrix yes and the gyro sensor not to miss compact hub yeah it's a small hub with inbuilt sensors but yes it has got the two ports which is the input and then output port which is available with it yeah and i think the option of also where you can connect with both bluetooth as well as you can charge it directly with the usb even that's a great kind of uh, you know input that is there and to uh, connect it and start going which was not available with the lego we do perfect thank you so much everybody for giving in that input great now to begin with yes now you have the spike essential with you now you have to get started on but yes there are many new intelligent hardware out there so how do i get started how do i know how to use it if you're not a techie so or even if you're totally new to it you want to go through what is available you just have to open your lego spike essential app and you have all the tutorial activities that you can access there okay uh, in just a minute we have it up here yeah so this is a spike app once you download it you have to open spike essential 
once you open spike essential you have to go to start can you see the start onto the left hand side corner yeah and then there uh, these are the different getting started process like if i can go on motor when i go on the motor you can learn how to make the motor turn yeah you have to just follow the instructions plugging it connecting it to the this and it shows you across what is the programming that you have to do it to make it turn and then click play yeah so this are easy kind of tutorials that are available at the beginning of the start for you to get used to of the different intelligent hardware that are available similarly we would request in each one of the teachers uh, to really try this out first and then move to the different units because it's very important uh, not only we as educators even as students that they go through this tutorial understand how they can use these hardware and the programming concept before they actually start using it in their units yeah this doesn't take more than uh, 15 20 minutes of a time uh, for the educators but yes uh, for the students you can give in the first period to explore this more but yes it takes you through a complete tutorial activities to go through the different intelligent hardware that is available Give me a second till I share my screen. So that was the tutorial activities for you. Now quickly we will run through two different activities. The first one is from the great adventures creating interactive stories called as Animal Alarm. So Animal Alarm uh, is from the unit which is from the great adventures which is a unit for grades one and two. It deals with the cause and the effect of it. So you get in with the complete uh, flow of the lesson. So what is the start of questions that you can ask in for this is what happens when an alarm goes off or how do you wake up in the morning? Uh, so you will get an answer that we put in an alarm to get up and to come into school. OK, and what would happen if you heard an alarm going off like a fire alarm? That's the time you would get in many different kind of answers. Uh, so in all this, you introduce uh, the story's main character out here uh, in this lesson through the Spike app itself. So in the units now, you need to open the app and in the units, You can go into the great adventure and go into the animal alarm lesson. Okay, so as mentioned, it began with the storyline. So Leo is sleepy, it's time to go to bed. But Leo is very curious. He wants to see all the creatures that walk by his camp at night. Hmm. So what do you think so you have to do if he has to see the different creatures? Can you put in the chat box, please? What he has to do to see the different creatures that walk past by? He can use a camera. Okay. Anything else that he can use in? Even if he's using a camera, maybe he's sleepy and he wants to wake up when an animal pass by. Alert to look, that is a sensor. Okay. He can use a sensor so that it alerts when I was, okay, sensor triggering alarm. Perfect. Thank you so much. So let's, he can use a trigger alarm so when he wake, he can see the creatures. Amazing, everybody. Thank you so much for giving your inputs on that. So let's move on and we are going to build an animal alarm. It will turn on when blue creature walks by the color sensor, okay? 
So you have to follow these instructions right now. We are not going to do it. We have already built it and kept it for you since we are short of time for a webinar today. And then once we are done with the building and you move on to the next part of it, which takes them through the challenge. Make the program to identify the blue alarm. And as you can see, it takes them through step by step on what is the programming coding that is required to create the alarm. So there is no need to panic. Even your grades one and two are able to uh, see, are able to do the different programs that is required. Can you see the video with the animal alarm? Can you give us a thumbs up in the chat box if you're able to see the video? Can you give a thumb? No, ma'am. Okay. Uh, I think you can stop the share so that you can see the video and then maybe we can show you the programming. Can you see the video now? Perfect. Thank you. So there's a blue creature and there is your uh, and uh, there's a complete animal uh, alarm which is built in. So you have a sensor, you have an LED line. And that's the house of Leo, the tent of Leo. Okay, so as you can see in across, whenever the red creature passes by or the blue creature passes by first, there is where the light in comes in. Yeah, so there are different changes that you can do in across. So what, that you can add in like the second progression is when a red creature passes by, you can add in sound, you can uh, uh, add in different kind of motions to it, uh, you know, uh, uh, when the sensor detects a red creature pass to it. If you want to uh, find out how many number of creatures have passed by, even that, you can do an across which is comes in the form of a graph. So as you can see in this graph, which is there in. So whenever a blue creature passes by, you can see the screen out there. It counts the number of creatures that have passed by. Yeah. So this is a great way to introduce even graphs to your students in a very fun and engaging way. So uh, it takes you step by step. It is like, uh, you know, easy coming and, and high ceiling kind of uh, tasks that you can give to your students. So there are inbuilt uh, features of graphs and even uh, weather options. You know, what is the weather right now in the different cities? So there are different kind of options which are also available. And below, if you see, and these are the different iconic blocks which are there and which you can drag, drop and use in across. Yeah. Now, for this lesson, uh, I will quickly take you through uh, the teacher guide. Just give me a second till I share my screen. Okay, so for all the teacher guides, you need to go into the education.lego.com and under that, if you have to just choose in your uh, Lego Education Spike Essential product, once you choose that, let me just come back and show you across that. So you have to go to education.lego.com. If you're looking into the NGSS uh, mm -hmm. curriculum or the US curriculum, you need to just go in here and your US curriculum is already there in, yeah? But if you want in for the national curriculum, you have to just convert it into GB and you get all your lessons into the national curriculum. This is a very important change if you want to change it and see according to your curriculum, okay? So 
there is where now let me see and we were talking about spike essential and we were talking about animal alarm lesson right so the what we saw right now was through the spike app on how your students will open and go through the different tasks which are there and see what is all is about for the cause and the effect but you as teachers how can you prepare it so the different lessons are available online Free of course, you do not have to even create your account. So you need to just go into education.lego.com, choose Spike Essential, go into Animal Alarm, and there is where you get your complete lesson, which follows the five E's aspect of it. So you get the time, preparation time. This small video will take you through what your students are going to do. And when you go to key objectives, it's all about the complete objectives your students will learn, what is the educational standards that are covered in, and yes, what are the extensions that are going to be covered out here? So what are the engaging questions that you can ask him? Like what would happen if you heard an alarm going off? What would you think this is happening? And then introduce the story to the main character and then the first challenge. Then explore it all about and then in explain is where you get them together and really understand what they have built in, why they have built in and what are the different changes that they have done in Accra. And elaborate it by asking questions. Where do you see cause and effect happening around you? Why is it important to predict cause and effect? At last is the evaluation where there is self-assessment that you can do and as also the observation checklist which is available even out here in the additional resources as assessment rubrics, which are there, yeah? And then the tips. So even as educators, you are new to it, do not worry, you have the complete support of the coding tips, which are available. So uh, you can use this and how, how you can differentiate a lesson is also available in the teacher resource. This is an extension activity where you can ask your uh, students to do about different nocturnal animals, you know, that could walk by the Leo's count site. And then they research about it and they give more detail of it. So this is just one of the uh, lesson which is there available for the uh, Lego education, which I wanted to quickly show you across. And then let's move on to another lesson uh, and quickly look into another lesson which is called as the mini mini golf. This is for the grades three to five. So you need to go into units. In units, you need to go into crazy carnival games, which you can see is related to STEAM and science. And then you need to go into mini mini golf. Yeah, so. Okay, this lesson, if you see in, what are the students going to do? They are going to explore how an object speed, it is related to the amount of energy it has. So uh, when we talk about a moving ball, example, a ball that is rolling down a hill or, uh, you know, being kicked uh, across a field of it. So which ball has more energy, a ball that isn't moving or a ball that's rolling down a hill? Can you put it in the chat box? Which ball has more energy, a ball that isn't moving or a ball that's rolling down a hill? Can we have it in the chat box? And how could you change the energy of the ball? Okay, so these are some quick hmm, start to thinking questions for your students before they're going to start the activity. And so let's start the activity where you connect it to Sophie who has been practicing and she thinks she can get a hole in one. So she wants to build a mini golf game like Sophie tried to get a hole in one. So she follows the instructions and she quickly builds 
the mini golf there she goes she's all ready now here's your challenge create a program to get a hole in one As suggested, you need to just follow the instructions and drag and drop and create your programs. As easy as this. So as you saw the program before this, we use the icon base and this is for the grade three to five where you can use in the scratch based programming. So you set speed to 20% first and then you are running and seeing it. So in the video, we will quickly show you across. So that's your mini golf out there. Isn't it superb to see in without going into a world field where you can just create one and the students having really fun with it? Do you agree? Oh, mm, I think we are a little short still, right? So what do you think? So we have to change in this. Any suggestions? What should we change to get a hole in one? We need to change the speed. Perfect. How much should we change the speed? Do you think so? Hundred? You want to make it hundred percent. I hope it's not going to jump across the total golf field and go ahead with hundred. But no problems. Let's. Try to do it. Okay, so he'll just stop the video and show it. Okay, there he goes. Oh, wow, perfect. That's a perfect hole in one. So there is where you can relate to the fact that how the speed is related to the energy of the ball. Now, what are the different things that the changes that you can do in and make the progression of it? So give us a second till we come back to the screen. So after they test the program and they have realized on how speed and the energy of the ball is related, you can add in sound light to make it more effective and to improve your mini golf altogether. And then, what else you can do? And you can upgrade your mini golf. So, if you can see, and there is parallel as well as the perpendicular, or the texture of on which the ball is moving can also be changed. So there are different ways that you can change your mini golf to make the, it more complicated or for them to understand, uh, you know, how they have to program or how the ball's energy would change in or the speed has to be changed in to get a hole in one in different kind of scenarios. Yeah. So uh, students, step by step, they do in different tasks and to analyze and get the different programs so this these are few of the things that we wanted to share in and if you click on the extension activity of it uh yes the blocks there so you can add in weather managers you can add the bar graphs music line graph more motors you know more sensors so these are different kind of extensions which can be added and students can explore more with spy essential <clears throat> so this let's move on to the lesson of the mini mini golf quickly before we go ahead and look into our customized activity and i'm very excited to show you that so mini mini golf as mentioned in quickly you can look into the video here to go through it Key objectives. What are the students going to learn? They're going to explore the basic principles of energy and their connection to an object. Identify and describe the relationship between speed and energy. Engage effectively in a range of collaborative discussions. What are the educational standards? You've got all your educational standards covered up there. 
you have even the student material. So when I'm going to click view online, there is where you can directly have in the uh, student worksheet given to your students. So what she wants to test has been practicing. So you get in the complete student worksheet which the students can open and start working on it. Yeah. So it starts in with the explore phase, create and test the program, have your students iterate and test their model, modify the program of the mini golf, right? And asking questions, what could you do to an object to increase the amount of energy it has? You know, have this uh, thinking knowledge which is going on. Why is it important to know about the relationship between speed and the amount of energy an object has? And then comes the evaluation, self-assessment with the tips of coding also that is available for you all. And yes, the different kind of uh, mini golfs that you can build it to make it more complicated. And what is the differentiation? And yes, the extension activity. Have your students investigate line symmetric figures in the mini mini golf lesson. Ask them to record the different angles that it is moving in and then draw and label the figure and all relevant parts related to parallel lines, perpendicular lines, as well as angles. So with the complete extension activities, you have a complete STEAM lesson for your students. In. Yeah, I hope you love this lesson, which is there and you're ready to showcase it in your classes. Now, quickly, let me just stop share and share across. Okay. So, to know more about Lego Spike Essential, now you can go into pd.legoeducation.com and uh, you can create your own accounts. It's totally free and in that you will get uh, access to all the different courses which is there by Lego Education. And specifically, since we are talking about Spike Essential now, you do not need a trainer to be in there, but uh, you, you can just go in and at your free time, you can do your different course and learn more about Lego Education and Lego Education Spike Essential. And now uh, we are excited to show you across uh, what we have come up with, uh, activities that you can do and with Lego Education Spike Essential on this 50 years of UAE completion, we are presenting proudly the Fly by Venus Challenge, which is for the age group of 6 to 10 using the Lego Spike Essential. <music>
So for this UAE mission, we have come up with the Venus Challenge for the young grades to know more about it and to learn more about the history uh, of the UAE space mission. So what you would require for this, you will need the Spike Essential Kit and we'll be providing with a customized mat which is developed for this. You have the engineering notebooks for students and then a complete digital presentation for the teachers. So uh, what will be the different challenge activities? We just don't want our students to do some robotics coding and just move around the robot, but we want to have the complete learning built into it. So first they will collect the UAE flag where they learn more about the UAE space exploration and its history during this activity. But the programming concept that they will use here is motor movements in seconds. Then they move to thermal shield. That why thermal protection is more important here. Since it's going to fly by Venus, it's going to be more closer to the sun that is going to transit in. So there should be a lot of thermal protection. So they're going to learn more about it. And the programming here will be more related to the rotations that they will use it. Then is the journey to Venus where they explore more about the planet Venus and the programming will be using sound and the display blocks. And then they will pass through the different asteroid belts, learn about asteroids as you travel the complete asteroid belt. And the programming is using the light sensor, detect six colors for the six different asteroids. And at last they will land on the seventh asteroid and Yes, collect all the raw materials from there for more kind of research and they will dance on the light landing and celebrate it. And with that, they will display angles, learn about angles with the gyro sensor, which is in build. And the completion time is 3.6, just as it would take in their normal uh, research that they have done in. Yeah. So it's a great activity for the students to do in classes and even learn the concepts. So quick, these are short videos on to understand what the students would do in. So this is related to the collection of the flag, which is there. Once they collect it, they will put it on to their spacecraft. So these are the programming blocks which will be shared with the teachers to understand and, and teach your students accordingly. The second mission is the thermal shield where they learn all about thermal shield. They collect the thermal shield, which they have to put it on to them and then move during their journey. This is related to the rotations that they would do in, and then is the journey to Venus using the sound and the display block. I don't know if you can hear it, but it's mentioning that the thermal shield is on. So here is where the audio is also recorded by the students and they are using it with the display block. And then is the asteroid belts. In asteroid belts, they explore the color sensor. So they program it for the different colors that it moves through the different asteroids. The similar color should be displayed on the LED accordingly. So that is where they research about it. And then this is the complete coding that is required to move through the mission for asteroid belt. And then the last but not the least, it lands in and displays angle with the gyro sensor. So to do all these activities, uh, the teachers will be provided with the complete um, digital presentation, which is required while taking your sessions for your students. So a kind of history uh, which starts with and why mass or, uh, you know, because this is related uh, to the mass mission, which was done earlier. So, you know, they are knowing about the history and then they are moving on. So you will get in videos with the different pictures which are available and then activities related to, to it like making an astronaut lander first. 
So what are the things that you need to uh, do an astronaut lander? And uh, what is the process? What is the engineering design process of it? So you brainstorm, you design, you build the lander, and then you test, evaluate, redesign, and you take it higher, yeah? So it's not just about robotics, it's about the complete learning that we want to emphasize here. And uh, when we talk about learning, we want our students uh, to note down their journey of uh, fly by Venus. And that's the reason they'll be provided with the engineering notebook. So the engineering notebook will have the complete list on how they have to move forward along with a complete um, digital uh, taking down of notes on how they are building with their complete research work that they do in Accra. Yeah, so they test, evaluate, and all the designs are done. And so uh, this is in brief related to the flyby Venus challenge, which is fully customized and developed by Atlan. And uh, thank you so much, everybody, for joining in uh, today's session. So uh, what we have in now, uh, you all have been some great attendees out there and thank you so much for being involved in the session uh, and showing in so much of interest. Uh, we are very grateful for you all to be part of the session. I hope this session was helpful. Uh, your feedback is very valuable for us. So you can use a QR code to scan and uh, to give us your feedback. And uh, to give away, uh, we will be choosing few winners from these attendees uh, who will receive a goodie from Atlab and Lego Education. Yeah, so uh, these are just random winners, uh, uh, attendees. So uh, do we have Mr. Uh, Thomas? Do we have Mr. Thomas with us or do we have uh, Sir Farja? These are just random winners that have come in from our attendees, but I think they were just there in across. Uh, Ms. Manal? Do we have these names out here? Oh, hi, congratulations, Ms. Manal. And I'm sure from the attendees who are left out uh, also, we will be choosing in two to three of the others who have won in and we will be shortly sending you through mail and what you have received. So the random winners of this session will receive a Brick Q Essential Personal Learning Kit. Yeah, and you will have a Lego Education Academy Teacher's Kit as well as a small uh, spike essential workshop kit that you can use it to do short workshops even in, at your school. So isn't that amazing? So you will be receiving it across shortly by mail from Atlas to get in more details. So um, thank you so much, everybody. I have taken more five minutes of your time. So thank you for that. If you have any kind of questions, you can put it in the chat box. Any kind of suggestions or your feedbacks, as mentioned, is very valuable for us. You can DM us anytime. Our email IDs uh, will be provided by Ailan in the chat box. Uh, to let you know more about Spike Essential, to know more about Fly by Venus. You can mail us anytime and we are happy to support you and provide you more details on it. Thank you so much everybody for joining in today's session. Have a great evening ahead.